Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about these little guys, LED light strips, and more importantly, how they are applied to your bass boat, or boat in general. And why not? They look great, they're incredibly efficient, they're safer if you're going to be on your boat at night, in two ways. One, if you're walking around and you don't trip and fall. Secondly, your boat is more visible to other boaters on the water. That is going to decrease the chances of them running into you. Not everyone is the smartest boater. You know that. Um, in this video, what we want to talk about is a little bit about the lights, uh, the selection, because there's multiple choices out there that you may not know about. And we're also going to talk about how to place the lights on your boat, because I've seen a lot of people spend a lot of money and put their lights on their boat, and you can only see the edges or down the middle and everything else is dark and I'm going to show you how to get around that so that you can put your lights on and illuminate the whole thing. Um, another thing I want to talk about is a few installation tips. I learned a few things the hard way and I'm going to share those with you so that you can do it right. Let's get into it. Now when you first start looking for LED light strips online you're going to notice that you have a lot of choices and one of those choices is going to be waterproof. Make sure you're looking for waterproof lights. You don't want to buy any that are not waterproof and then try to put them on your boat. Um, another thing you're going to notice is you're going to have a choice between a 3528 or a 5050 or a 5630 and that is a size of the light. It's actually a surface area of the individual light is what that designation is. Now here I have a 3528 over here and I have a 5050. I don't have the 5630 because I think in most cases that's going to be a little bit overkill for most boats. Um, one of the reasons for that is because of the power consumption. Um, each one of these is uh, a multiple of three in power consumption. That is a 5050 uses about three times as much power as a 3528, also about three times as brighter, and then you go another three times to get to the 5630. But in most cases, a 56, um, a 55, um, excuse me, a 5050 is going to be adequate. Now, um, the other thing I want to talk about though is the light quality, and that's where the 5050 really has a big benefit over the 3528. Um, if you know anything about uh, the spectrum, you'll notice that a 5050 actually has uh, more colors involved, even though these are both blue lights and they both look the same color blue. Um, I actually had both of these lit up with a 9 volt battery and I put, the, um, put them in front of a coffee cup that had a lot of colors in it. In front of the 3528, uh, that coffee cup basically looked black and white and gray. Whereas in front of the 5050, all those colors kind of popped out. And that's something you really want to think about if you're fishing at night. And you're looking for something that's uh, black versus something that's maybe bluegill colored or watermelon green. Um, you want to make sure that you can tell exactly what you've got. And that's where a 5050 is really going to help you out. Um, and in most cases, I think a 5050. LED light strip is going to be one of the best applications on your boat. Now one other thing I want to mention is the background of these lights that I have here are what they call a white PCB. You can also get the same lights in a black PCB. Um, you may want to consider how that's going to look on your boat if you're putting them on the deck and where they're going to be uh, visible. Uh, in most cases where they're going to be in a storage compartment or um, underneath a gunnel or underneath a console and they're not going to be seen, you really won't have to worry about that much. But if you have a white boat and they're going to be visible, a white PCB light might be a better application. Or in my case, on my darker boat, I've used the black PCB for the deck lighting and I have white lights everywhere else where they're not visible. So definitely something to consider. You do have a choice there and in some cases it can really make a difference. Now on the deck of the boat, you'll notice that you can see my light strips over there and you'll also notice that they're not exactly in the middle, uh, height-wise. They're 
some people want to put them nice and low to keep them out of the way. Some people want them a little higher. But you kind of have to experiment on exactly where they're at so that you don't have a dark spot down the middle or you don't have dark edges. So uh, put them up there with masking tape first before you adhere them to the side of the boat and uh, check them out. Uh, let's see if I can get a good video of how these cast the light across the deck. Okay, here you can see with the lights on, you can see how uh, everything's lit up fairly consistently across from side to side on the deck. Uh, same thing in the back, which is a little tougher because some of the back decks, uh, the gunnel is at an angle. So you'll have to play around with that a little bit. Uh, and a little bit of that depends on the length of your light strip and how high up you place it. You'll also notice that I have lights underneath my consoles and that is a really, really nice benefit there. Now when you're ready to put your lights on the boat, you have to make sure that the boat is clean. You'll see people in reviews all the time talk about how their lights didn't stick to their boat. And the reason is you have to make sure that it is clean. Wipe it down with rubbing alcohol. Use rubbing alcohol, use a lot of it. When you think it's clean, clean it three more times and it'll stick and it'll stick good. Now let's talk about how to seal these up. After you put your wiring on, what you'll want to do is use heat shrink tubing. Sometimes, in my case for instance, with the 5050 SMD and 18 gauge wire, you'll have to start off with a couple little pieces down on the small side and build that up a little bit before you can go to a bigger piece of heat shrink tubing. But when you're done, you're going to have a good, tight, waterproof seal on this end. Now on the other end where you've cut it, there's multiple uh, uh, products out there that are a rubberized liquid sealant and you just want to put a little dab of that on the end to keep the water from wicking up inside that end of the light and causing you problems. Now for my navigation lights, I've actually done something that's a little bit different than anything I've seen online. I've seen a lot of different ways to put your navigation lights inside your rub rail, but what I've done is actually put a 5050 SMD light inside a piece of clear vinyl tubing that is the same size as my rub rail insert. Now I had to solder the wire to the light strip and gently pull it through and I left a gap on either end where I could take a piece of a round plastic coat hanger and I just took a small section of it, wrapped a couple of turns of masking tape around it and push that through in the very end to seal up both ends of the vinyl tubing. The wiring for the lights actually go through a small hole that I drilled about 3 eighths of an inch from the end of the vinyl tubing and then the wiring goes through a small hole that I drilled in the gunnel. Both of those holes were sealed up before it was put in and I've also taken a piece of heat shrink tubing and the heat shrink tubing goes around the two pieces of the insert and the vinyl uh, the vinyl tubing and you can kind of move that around before you put it in and, and shrink it up to adjust the distance of your light opening from the front and also to adjust your overall length. Now in my storage compartments I used all of the existing courtesy compartment lighting wiring and then I just hooked up an LED light strip to it and again Make sure the surface is really clean, make sure the ends are sealed, and just go ahead and tape it up to the side. I've got this done up nice and high so that at night the light itself doesn't blind you, but it does throw off a really good light across everything in the compartment so you can find everything nice and easily. Now here I want to attempt to show everybody how I solder my wires together. And there's a couple different reasons that I want to solder it the way I do. One is for strength and connection. And the reason for that is a better connection is going to have less draw on your battery. Remember that. You have to have a very solid good connection with very little resistance between each one of these wiring connections to make sure that you don't draw any battery that you don't want to uh, just waste. So now what I do is I take these two wires after I strip the insulation and I'm going to go ahead and wrap those around each other about good four, five, six times. Now, when I'm actually working around, I don't want to have a um, <clears throat> hot soldering iron 
that I can lean on or something. But I do have a candle here. And what I'll do is I'll take and I get those wires nice and hot. And after I get those nice and hot, then I'm going to go ahead and melt that solder in. And make sure that that solder works all the way down into, into those uh, wraps of the wire. So it gets inside and forms a good, strong connection. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to put this small piece of heat shrink tubing right over the top of that. And I'm going to bring that down. And from that point, I'm going to pull it back out so that there's... I want to have a nice section leading... It hangs over the end of that. And after I get this shrunk down, all the way down, then I'm going to fold this over. I'm going to fold that extra piece over and put this other piece of heat shrink tubing right over the top of it. And that's going to seal the end so that moisture can't get in that way. And then when I get done with all of that, I'm going to take one more piece, this that same size, and bring that down right about the same distance and by doing so now you've got a good solid connection and the other thing that it does after that cools down that way if for some reason something gets hung up on your wiring and it pulls it's going to have a little bit of a flex before uh, a little bit of give before it actually breaks your wiring okay actually that's still a little bit warm but you'll get the idea it's not going to cause any problems if something does get hung up on it you run a lot better chance of not breaking your wiring last thing i want to mention is make sure you have a good waterproof switch and make sure it's somewhere that's not going to get bumped or um, knocked off i also if you can see up here i have my dimmer switch so when i turn on my lights I can actually dim everything down and everything's nice, clean, out of the way. So remember everyone, make sure your lights are placed properly, make sure everything's clean, make sure your connections are strong and soldered, make sure everything is as waterproof as you can get it and you're going to have a very nice LED light system on your boat that's going to last for a very, very long time.